What's going on? I'm gonna take you guys through the day of a life of a New York City carnivore. And my life is a lot different than most people in New York City because I live in one of the boroughs and I actually do still drive a car. So most of you guys might not actually be like, oh, he's not a, he's not a real New Yorker. And this is also a day off in my life because if I was working, I would literally just be getting up, going to work, coming home. There wouldn't really be anything for me to film because I can't film at work and I can't, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with filming in public in a lot of New York places, but it doesn't work out too well. So uh, I, I actually, I was recording like me waking up, me doing my makeup and stuff. And then that's a joke guys, I don't wear makeup. I woke up, I just wiped my face with a wet rag. Um, I came down here. Uh, well, got dressed, came down here, drank some reverse osmosis water. That's the only part of my day I didn't film so far. So it's uh, 9 a.m. Uh, the game plan was I had an interview at 12 for a staffing company in Manhattan. I had an interview at 1 o'clock for a restaurant in Manhattan. And then, as you can see, you know, bartenders don't really have to dress up too much for an interview. <laughs> I used to dress up in suits and stuff and like... I would never get the job. I used to wear button downs and stuff. Sometimes I get the job with button downs if it was higher end stuff, but you don't have to dress up for bartending interviews. I guess that's one. The nice thing is you don't have to dress up for interviews. The con is I don't have a job and I'm a bartender, right? And then the, after that, we were gonna go to an orthodontist appointment at one o'clock, so I gotta uh, move that a little later. And then I was gonna drop some bread off at my grandma's. I got this, I baked this, um, this naturally fermented sourdough bread. It's made with einkorn wheat. It's the first type of wheat there was. A very different crumb structure, very dense, very uh, very high in calories. Um, the healthiest version of bread you could literally eat. Um, uh, there's a bunch of heirloom and indigenous grains and I bake this bread for my family because I mean, my dad eats like so much bread and my family eats so much bread, I figured this is a healthy alternative instead of them eating that. So I definitely wanna drop this off of my grandma's and she's never had this before, so I wanna see how uh, she likes it. After that, I have to come back up to my parents' house for an interview. And then uh, we're going to go to, uh, probably gonna, I have to go, go take care of my sister too. So we'll line that up with uh, the interview of my parents. I'll go take care of my sister for a couple hours and then I'm going to probably cook dinner for my family and then we're gonna actually eat myself. Uh, you know, this is not like, uh, I usually only eat once a day. Uh, sometimes I eat two times a day and today is actually the first day of my, uh, no, technically third day, but first day of recording my Eskimo diet of salmon. And I'll show you guys all my stuff later. Uh, but right now it's, it's only nine o'clock so I don't really have anything to do for an hour or two. Uh, if I do decide to go down to the city, that is. Because I might change my mind and say, screw the interviews. It's nice outside. Let me just get an hour or two of sun instead. And then we'll go to the orthodontist. Uh, so uh, I'm probably going to do like an interview or two for my YouTube channel and do some video editing right now. And then I will check in with you guys. And I'm, I just had the water. That's all I'm going to have. It is a beautiful day. And it's, uh, it's 11 o'clock. The reason 11 o'clock is important, it's because it's typically the time I would start tanning. And the reason for that is the peak UV index is usually at 1 p.m. So if I want to tan for three or four hours in a day when I'm off, I would go outside, uh, you know, one or two hours before and after peak UV, just to get the most bang for my buck in regards to sun exposure. And even though today is super duper cold, it's literally like the coldest day uh, since summer, it's only, I think it's like 45, 50 degrees outside. Uh, in the sun's rays, and you guys can see it's super nice outside today. Like super, as clear as the sky can get, perfect, beautiful day for tanning. Even though it's the end of October and it's like uh, not necessarily the best time, you can still get plenty of sun and UV and vitamin D, uh, you know, for two or three hours out here. Uh, I usually try to do this every single day I can. Uh, if I'm off and it's sunny outside, I mean this usually only happens like maybe two or three times a week in the summer and then me once or twice a week at other parts of the year. And now that it's getting cold outside and uh, you know the the sun's rays aren't pen penetrating the hemisphere as much, I pretty much have to go to the tanning salon. So uh, we'll, we'll probably do that later. Um, and because I have to do an interview today, I have a bunch of other things to do. Uh, since I don't have time to 
I'll lay out here for two or three hours and I have some things to do on my computer. I gotta go down for the interview later. Uh, we're just gonna hit up the tanning salon later probably. Uh, but it really, really is a nice day. Uh, usually I'll just lay out here in my underwear for like uh, two or three hours. Sometimes I'll even just, like I'll just hang out re re on my phone for an hour or two. Uh, even just to tan my face, get some UV exposure. And uh, it really makes me feel good. This is one of the most important elements that I pe think people miss in regards to kind of achieving optimal health. Uh, definitely check out my Greek God video on vitamin D3 if you guys want to know more about this. Uh, but yeah, no, it's really a shame I'm, I have to be inside all day. It's so nice out. All right, so I got to leave now because I'm going to be late for my dentist appointment. But uh, I, was, I was planning on going on this interview in the city. Uh, I looked the place up. Um, you know, and what really happened was I had to do an interview for my YouTube channel and I could not uh, finish the interview in time to make it down to the city for the interview. So, uh, we're just going to go to my, it's like 12.30 now, 12.40. I got to be my orthodontist at 1 o'clock. I'm going to drive over there real quick. Uh, then, oh, I forgot the bread. Uh, then we're going to go to my grandma, drop off the bread that I made for her. Then I'm going to go up to... Uh, my parents' house, right where I am now, uh, back up here for an interview. And then we'll go home and uh, we'll actually do some zero carb carnivore stuff. I will go to the gym later, but I can't film that because I got uh, I got a warning from my gym. I might get banned if I film again in the gym. Uh, but actually, just to show you guys, here's a dehydrator. I was dehydrating some uh, some fish eggs. Doesn't look like this turned out too well. The inside's still a little soft. We'll see how they turn out in a day or two, and I'll try them. Smell pretty. Smell funky and tasty. And those are actually de those are actually dehydrated at a raw temperature, so they still preserves the rawness of the food. Into the uh, into the very old car we go. I could show them. I could like just you guys could sit here and watch me drive. <laughs> the good thing is now I don't have to worry about bringing my camera down to the city. But what are you gonna do? Uh, we still do have to go down to the city. I just don't have to like film in the city, walking the ca with the camera on the street. Okay. I just got my uh, new bottom retainers uh, at the orthodontist. Uh, it wasn't too late, it wasn't too bad, but now I'm gonna head over to the, well, one of the boroughs of Manhattan, visit my grandma, drop off some bread, and maybe I'll get her to tell you guys a story. So, my grandma did not want to be on camera. I actually did film her tell, uh, she was talking about how like, her grandma used to give her cod liver oil. Uh, she was talking about how like they used to scramble eggs with up, up with like chicken intestines, how they used to always eat veal liver, calves liver, uh, brain, all the like just all these really traditional old school organ meats that these Italians used to eat. Uh, but she doesn't want to be uh, she doesn't want to be on camera. So um, I just I dropped off some bread um, that I made for her, the naturally fermented sourdough bread. I actually had to show her how to put more butter in the eggs and how to do the eggs because uh, she wasn't doing it right. And uh, if you guys want to see my car, um, uh, I picked this up last year. Uh, when my YouTube channel started taking up. <laughs> I'm joking guys. If I drove a Mercedes, I wouldn't be making goddamn YouTube videos. <laughs> um, this is my car. You guys like the back? I got the dash cam. Uh, let's just say my car is older than you think it would be for having 50,000 miles on it. Um, let's put it this way. If I spend, if I spend fifty dollars a week in gas for the whole year, that's worth more than my car. It, the amount of gas I spend on it for the whole year. So hopefully that gives you guys some context of what I'm working with. And um, you know, I just don't think I'll. I mean, obviously, I would like to. Uh, I need a. I need. I need a better car just for my safety. <laughs> like uh, right now, I. I really. Uh, I mean. Like driving this in the warmer month is fine, but when the winter comes, it's definitely when it rains outside, uh, definitely should not be driving this car. So, um, 
I don't really want to show you guys uh, the outside. I mean, you guys could probably tell what model car it is from the inside, but I just didn't want to give away like my license plate or just any other information because it's a commercial vehicle, so I have the address on the side of the car. Um, but now, uh, that was that. What else? Um, I'm going to, oh, I was thinking about, uh, so I had a long conversation with my grandma. Not really long, but I was talking to her about like what she should do, trying to increase the omega-3s in her diet just so she feels a little better. And... Uh, I'm going to make her some tuna fish. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to get the guy from the fish market to bring me like uh, maybe 5 or 10 pounds of tuna. I'm going to can some tuna. Um, hopefully that turns out good. I got to think of a marinade for it and then we'll maybe some, can some tuna for her. I also got to pick her up some cod liver oil pills. I brought her canned cod liver. I brought her liquid. She didn't want to take it. So now I got to get her something else to get the omega-3 in her diet. Uh, I'm going to head back up uh, to... Uh, where my family is. I'm gonna go on an interview at that restaurant and uh, then we'll go home and we'll do some more interesting stuff, I guess. At least m stuff pertaining more to the carnivore diet. All right, guys, I just got out of my interview and looks like Frankie Boy, you might be seeing a little less of Frankie Boy. Let's, let's just leave it at that. Um, I did get a job offer. Uh, we'll see how this pans out. You know, it's weird because it's not in Manhattan and I've only worked in Manhattan. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes over the next few weeks, maybe a month or two. And um, I'm definitely going to be getting some extra income. Uh, maybe I'll finally be able to afford a better car uh, in that case. Um, but uh, I'm excited. I'll, ke I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, and um, maybe in a couple weeks I'll give you guys an update. All right, guys. I just got home. It is 4.30. Not bad for a day, right? I'll drop off some food to my grandma. Oh, I, the interview earlier was with Kasumi Chris. Crystal and uh, that interview might be published before this but definitely check that out from v four year vegan to carnivore and she had amazing results um, but you know not bad right got a job uh, see how that goes over the next few weeks um, what, what, what did I want to say about that um, I'm like five for five in my last five interviews I'm pretty good right uh, but anyway I uh, just got home uh, the game plan is we're gonna eat uh, I gotta make some sourdough bread I gotta make some batarga uh, I have a couple of things to do. I got to finish editing that video on my computer. Uh, but first I'm going to eat and then uh, the bread needs to rise. So we'll probably do the bread next. And I guess let's just go get rolling. In. But first you guys get to meet my lovely sister, Gina. Oh, I'm not wearing makeup. She's Gina, you, ne you never wear makeup. Come on, Pete. Gina, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the camera? <laughs> Hi, YouTube people. I'm... Frank's sister, Gina. Um, Gina, why don't you tell them how hard of a time you gave me this morning uh, when you were getting ready? My time with what? I don't know what you mean. How were you acting this morning, Gina? I was not acting very nice. Okay. Which I apologize for. Mm -hmm. And I am doing better. And as you know, my brother Frank is a trainer, bartender. He's a really Extraordinaire. Good guy. Gina, why don't you tell them... Um, how much weight you lost and how much better you feel? I lost 40 pounds, all thanks to this wonderful guy right You lost right more here. than 40 pounds, Gina. How much did you used to weigh? You used to weigh, what, 150? And now we weigh, what, 100? Yeah. So you lost more than 40 pounds, right? Yeah, more than 40 pounds. And to tell you the truth, ever since I've lost the weight, I do not crave any sweets. You say that, but how many, how many cook? you had at least one cookie a week, right, at your program? Not, not ever, not this week or Not this week, week or okay, so well, she, the point is she, she usually doesn't stick to her diet too well. So, uh, we're going to have some salmon today. This is all the meat that's actually in my fridge right now. Um, this is a bunch of lamb fat uh, that's probably going to be aging for another week or two. Uh, I'm probably going to, I got to lower this to this rack down here actually. Um, but down here is a bunch of bags of salmon. Uh, this is a mess probably. I'm going to have to clean this up. Um, I just, I like the fish delivery came yesterday and it was like the bag was ripped. It was in a box full of crushed ice. It was a mess. And the only real way to keep these fillets is in these bags like this. Well, maybe we'll find a worm or two for you guys today. So got my bag of salmon. Nice salmon fillet we'll throw on the grill. Um, we got some stuff from Amazon too, probably my, my long johns and something else. We're going to go outside, put my grill on. Uh, first thing, as I said, I want to do, I just want to eat something because I do want to work out later. 
So I want to digest for at least a couple hours. This is gonna be like the first good actual like cooking segment because I have a windscreen on this mic now. And you guys could hear this, so. I usually just, I take some random wood, I chop it up over there. I guess I'll show you guys that. All right. I just, I got this stump and I like, um, like a street by one of the schools in my neighborhood. And I've been chopping wood on this ever since. So I got two pieces of wood in the grill. Light this up. This is probably gonna take about five minutes to warm up. I'm just gonna go inside. I'm gonna get uh, everything prepped I need to cook out here. Okay, so. I cut up a bunch of the salmon. I didn't talk about this yet. This is uh, Faroe Island Scottish salmon. There's no real wild salmon in season and this is actually like the most kind of ethically farmed salmon there is, the highest quality. Um, it's decent stuff. I'm gonna just be doing it for the Eskimo diet for a little while. And here I got some steaks that I'm just grilling for my family. So just the one thing to note about the salmon is when you put this on a really hot flame, the skin peels off, and then I have to sear it normally. Uh, and it's, it's super fatty, so I don't have to oil it or anything. We bought a towel out here. If you guys want to actually like grill salmon and keep the skin on it, it's very difficult to do. Uh, you need to oil the grate, the skin of the salmon needs to be really dry. The temperature of the grill has to be just right, not too hot. This is a little too hot for that. And then the main, one of the main reasons I use a grill is to avoid like, well, the mess in the kitchen and uh, the fat oxidation in the pan that you usually get. That's pretty good. Still like, it's, it's pretty much really, really raw on the inside. I'm gonna have a piece of this while I'm out here. That's what I love so much about this diet. You literally just put a piece of meat on a fire and it tastes good. No salt, no seasoning, no nothing. I don't usually do this, guys. Guys, you need a chef. You need to grill, me to grill your salmon. Skin on, skin off, doesn't matter. It's perfect.
This is uh, a crispy piece with the skin on. That is so good. This is the belly part. It's like pure fat. Pure salmon fat. All right, let me lower the seat. You guys haven't read The Fat of the Land, Baba Yammer Stephenson? It talks about like their preference for fatty parts of the animal, and this is an example of like one of the parts they would have eaten. Or at least prized. I'm not even that hungry anymore. Like, after those two pieces of fatty belly, I'm kind of like, you know, over it. Look at that, huh? I'm gonna cook my family's food. I'm gonna let this rest for a few minutes and then we'll go inside and eat. All right, guys, so here I have some flounder row. This was uh, $2 a pound at the local fish market. Uh, I've been messing around trying to make batarga and stuff, uh, which is, it's like cured salted fish row. I'm trying to figure out how to make it, but that's what I'm using most of it for because I mean, I could just, I put some of it in a jar just to ferment it. Uh, but I obviously don't just want to be eating a bunch of rotten fish. Although that's, I'm sure some of you guys would love it. Um, and I'm thinking about actually making it into a product that I could sell. But I'm trying to figure it out. The taste is okay. I mean, it's not salmon roe, you know. It's like very, it pretty much looks like orange pudding. Yesterday it was super fresh. Now it has a bit more flavor. Really tasty. Uh, so, salmon roe is, and well, not salmon roe, but just fish eggs in general have all the fat soluble vitamins. And in every indigenous group, uh, fish eggs were the food that people fed to their pregnant and nursing woman if they didn't have access to foods like high quality raw dairy. Uh, it tended to be either fish eggs or like liver or spring butter, spring milk, spring cheese. Definitely the most prized high quality animal food that there was out of, well, all of them really. Just because it, it has literally a complete fat soluble vitamin profile, A, D, E, K, water soluble vitamin B and C more DHA than any food. That's why fish eggs are so healthy for you. The amount of DHA eclipses even wild caught fish. Um, I'm just gonna take uh, some salmon. If you guys look at the temperature, it's like, it's pretty much raw in the middle. I just put a little bit of salt on top. I was thinking about using coconut aminos, but I don't really put that much salt on anyway, so coconut aminos wouldn't really reduce my salt intake. Now for me, like, I really enjoy adding salt more than not. I mean, I ate a whole filet out there, a couple of filets out there without salt on them, but. See, like this piece here, really raw in the middle. It's 
I think Japanese call this like beet, like tataki, where the outside is seared and the inside is completely raw. AKA Blue Rare. Dude. Honestly, I'm just gonna go on MasterChef this season. I'm gonna open up. I'm gonna do decent on the show. I'm gonna open up Frankie's Grill. And I'm just gonna have a giant wood fire. Throw everything on the grill, season it, marinate it. It's gonna be amazing. Is a piece with the skin. The skin gets really crispy and burned fast. It's like pure, it's like just like char burn. I do have some concerns about like the source of the salmon, but that's why I'm only gonna have it for about a week, a week and a half, just to kind of complete this Eskimo diet thing. No, that was pretty good. I ate about half the salmon that I took out, the half of that filet, maybe a little more. Probably save this for later. Really, really full. I'm not stuffed, but I'm definitely really satiated. So, gotta make some bread. Make some bread. Um, I'm not gonna film that for you guys, the bread. Uh, the bread thing, you guys, I'll, hopefully I'll publish a video soon on sourdough bread. It might not be for a while. So make the bread, edit some videos. Uh, the next time you guys are going to see me is, I'm going to do that and then I'm going to, oh, we're going to go to the tanning salon. Uh, I'm probably actually not going to bring you guys with me. I guess I can. Like I could just show you guys like me walking to this, like outside of the salon. I could show you guys like, me walking to in and out of the gym, but I can't film in those places, so I figure like, what's the point? But uh, 
I maybe I'll just take you guys along uh, for the ride in the car, and um, and then maybe we'll come back and we'll eat the rest of this later. Uh, but I didn't touch on the, of course, the, the salmon row, the fish row, the flounder row was nutritionally complete. The salmon is just, I mean, salmon has pretty much every fat soluble vitamin too. It's pretty much the row, but to like a less concentrated extent. And of course, with more fat and more calories. I did want to show you guys, um, well, this is my, I made some sushi for my sister, but she doesn't want it. So I'm probably going to throw it out. This is just the can of fish row. I actually separated it from the egg sacs and I did a whole video on fish row that might not be up for a while too, but that this is very time consuming to do. That's why I left most of them in the skines here and these are sitting in like um, a salt water marinade uh, for a day or two and then I'm going to oil. I got to oil them now, I think, and then we'll um, Oil them now and maybe add a little more salt and try to dry them out. Let me just show you guys what I'm doing. So here I got the the egg sacs from the fish row that I got the other day that were kind of whole. I'm curing them with salt and olive oil to make batarga uh, as a preserved food. I have some bread dough rising in the bottom oven just to stay warm. Here I have the egg sacs that were kind of like open and broken. And this is how you actually make caviar. You just cut open the egg sac and you scrape the eggs out with a knife. And the fish has to be kind of fresh to do this. If it's frozen, the eggs will just burst. And you just want to make sure that there's no membrane in the eggs. And then that's your caviar. Some membrane there. This is what I'll be doing for the next hour or two before I leave. All right, guys, I got my workout clothes on. This is my new outfit I bought, just some, like, cheap Hanes sweatpants and sweatshirt. Uh, I bought a medium shirt and a medium pants, and I think I'm going to regret not buying a large shirt and small pants, but uh, I don't know. I'll see how it's... I mean, it should be fine. I mean, it's just I wish the I wish the top was a little longer, and I wish the legs were a little shorter, so maybe I'll, I'll switch the sizes. But uh, I'm going to go to the tanning salon, then we're going to go to the gym, and then I'll come home, probably eat again, and... Uh, I guess I'll finish baking my bread, but again, that's going to be in a different video, guys. So I'm not showing you guys the uh, the bread baking. I was just thinking, like, I can't film at the tanning salon. I can't film at the gym. So, uh, like, what's the point of, like, what am I just going to walk on the street and tell you guys what I'm doing and then, like, go in my car? Like, um, so uh, let me just show you guys what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. And I'll show you my hygiene stuff now. And then we'll say goodnight. So this was just my second meal. I did cook. I took out some more fish row and I cooked the salmon a little more. I don't know how much of that I'm going to eat. Um, the stuff that I didn't really show you guys, you know, I wasn't really staying too well hydrated today. But here I have, this is uh, just the clay, the kaolin clay water. And um, I also have some seaweed. And sometimes what I do is I use the seaweed for electrolytes. I do some kelp, some kombu. You know, seaweed has a very good mineral profile, very high in potassium, very high in magnesium. Excellent source of electrolytes. That's usually what I do for that. I have some hygiene stuff in my parents' house. Most of it is actually in my apartment. Um, but I could, I have most of the stuff here, so I can show you guys anyway. This is just a, a water pick, a water flosser. Uh, ever since I had my jaw surgery with the braces and the wired shut, this is like my saving grace. Like, this water flosser is by far my favorite thing for cleaning my mouth. Here I have a tongue scraper. I have a dental brush, which brushes all the other stuff. Just an electric toothbrush. Uh, here's the toothpaste I make, and here's the deodorant I make. Um, I'm looking for a way to produce these. I have to find. I haven't found anyone yet. Uh, some guy suggested someone on Twitter, but I got to look into it, get a production line going for some cosmetic products. Uh, outside of that, like, like this is what I used to shave, just a straight razor sometimes, my combs. Uh, I don't really use, I don't really use any, I don't use any products for my hair, guys. I don't, um, uh, I do, so, sometimes I'll, like, slick it back with water, but that's about it. Uh, I don't have my lip balm here, I don't have my soap here. Uh, those are some other products that I, I've been making. 
Uh, but outside of that, guys, uh, let me just show you my, my nighttime setup up here. So, this is just, I sleep on a fresh towel every night. There's a clean towel so I don't have to clean uh, the pillowcase every night. This is just a night mask to, uh, to block the light when I sleep. And here I just have some earplugs. It just helps like increase the quality of sleep. That is my day, guys. I am sorry I can't film anywhere in New York. Like, there's, there's like no, there's nowhere to film. I can't film, I can't go somewhere without someone bothering me. Like, I, I'm going to get my gym membership canceled on me. Like, I can't, I can't even film, like, my family and stuff. So, uh, I know you guys like these vlog style videos, and I really don't know how a lot of these big YouTubers do it. Maybe it's because they're not in New York or uh, they're, they're somewhere else where people don't really care. But I've noticed I can't really film in any public place without getting in trouble or something. And, and this has happened everywhere. I've even tried to, I don't even try, I don't even want to try filming in my, my supermarket to do like a, an on the go video, you know, what am I going to do? But thank you guys for watching. Um, if, if you guys would like to see more stuff like this, let me know. And, and maybe I'll try to think about where I can improve videos like this. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to eat. Uh, I'm probably just going to go, maybe I'll go to Tanny Salon Gym and then I'll go to bed. Um, but I just feel like. You know, those clips of like me going into the tanning booth, blah, 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 coming out, like the gym, walking in the gym, walking out of the gym. I feel like I'm missing those things, but what are you going to do? I'm not honestly willing to really, you know, it, to me it adds production value, but it doesn't really add like, like you guys know what I'm doing. I'm not going to, uh, like if you guys want to know more, more about tanning, I cover it in my vitamin D3 video. If you guys want to know why I, um, if you guys like want to know my workout routine, I'm not sharing that for free. So too bad, uh, but uh, outside of that, uh, you know all the, all this other information. It was just kind of just to show you guys what I do on a day today, and uh, day today and day to day, like just to kind of get you guys an understanding of the various aspects of my health that you might be missing. And uh, I know we didn't really cover like um, we didn't really cover electrolytes too much. Uh, I didn't really show you guys a lot of that because I just all I did was I drank the distilled water. This lighting in here is terrible. Uh, I drank the distilled water um, at uh, in the morning, and then I drank a little more distilled water throughout the day. I didn't actually stay as hydrated as I wanted to. And then, uh, like just right now, I showed you guys the seaweed and some clay water that I'll probably go down and drink later. Uh, but yeah, that's I mean that's unfortunately how it is. Like a lot of times, most of my day is like a lot of times just me driving around, going on interviews, uh, doing stuff like that. But we'll see what happens. Um, see if I get this new job. We'll see if uh, something else pans out, but um, no, I mean, I'm, my life's pretty boring, guys. Uh, outside of the, you know, job search and YouTube stuff, I'm, I'm doing, uh, I do some acting stuff on the side sometimes. I was thinking about doing like a New York City uh, day in the life of an actor video. I was, should have probably filmed that once. But that's, that's the same difficult thing where I can't really film a lot of this stuff. So uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support me, please just uh, share the video. Uh, my website is up now. It's frank-tefano.com. Uh, if you guys would like to support me, please check out my Amazon shop, check out the Patreon, uh, check out my website if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one consultations. Um, but uh, outside of that, guys, enjoy the rest of your day.